Hello YouTube! I thought I'd give a tour of my uh, basement workshop in my house before I sell it. So follow me along. It's in the basement. At the bottom of the steps I have this dehumidifier running. Uh, because water likes to come in the house. This is after that downpour we had recently. But anytime I'm down here, I pretty much have to shut it off, otherwise it's really annoying. So around the stairs, this comes to my workshop here. And it's somewhat temporarily installed because I knew I wouldn't be living here forever. Long-term plans was never to live here more than five years, and we've lived here three years and we're already moving. So I just have some drywall supplies, paint supplies, and then here's sort of my catch-all that's just uh, two sawhorses here with some wood on it. I have a sous vide controller, 8 inch grinder, rust remover, motor, speaker project that's unfinished, some wiring, pipe wrench, bathroom blower fan, Denford Sherline CNC lathe, um, I need to build a controller board for it. Here's my CNC mill, Denford micro mill again. Um, I already built a controller board for it. I'll walk around the back and show you. Oh, there's my sump pit water heater that's rusted through. Water softener. That's a uh, jet ski engine. What is that? Is that a 61X? I think that's a 61X. 701. When I say built the controller, well, I have some videos on this, but really it was just a, uh, a parallel breakout board that interfaced with this motor driver board. So the parallel board takes signal from the computer and tells the stepper driver board what to do. And that all works pretty good. Coming back around, uh, I haven't cleaned anything, so you guys see exactly how it was. Um, I have a, a table and a base for a drill press that I'm restoring. Other random junk. I have, I don't have these labeled, but one's all plumbing shit and one's all electrical shit. Um, here's parts for that drill press. These are mechanical bits and then painted bits. Uh, here is a old machinist toolbox. Try to keep all of my nicer measuring tools in there. Um... Wrenches, Harbor Freight, these sockets have lasted me like a very long time. Drill press motor, old uh, Coleman stove for camping. Part of an unfinished speaker project. I have, uh, it's a old time radio and I was putting Bluetooth in it, but I got distracted like last year. Uh, here's a workbench that I had built and not finished. I even recorded a bunch of video for this, but um, since I'm never going to finish it, I don't know if that video will ever see the light of day. Um, more drill press parts, there, my Bosch tools, I got some vices, this would be for a woodworking bench that I'd like to build someday. I have a whole bunch of reclaimed lumber at my new place that I'm going to build a workbench out of, and then two other bench vices. A IV pump. This would be for veterinary use. Um, my wife and I own a veterinary hospital, and this was one of the old ones. So she said, "Hey, take it home." And I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Either tear it down, or maybe try to sell it on eBay. I think those were going for between fifty and two hundred bucks. I'm not sure. Here's my grinder. This is a small one. It's pathetic. Um, here's my sound system. like to listen to Star Talk Radio when I'm down here. It's a, uh, a Bluetooth receiver, a Muse amplifier, 
and then two Dayton B652 speakers. Um, up here I have some assorted storage. And then here's my hardware organization. I have like, this one's all nails, that one's some screws, this one's hardware, and I have more nails and screws and whatever there. And here's one of my, here's one of my storage shelves. You can see it organized as, uh, this is like a lot of abrasive stuffs and abrasive stuff and rags. And I have some sanding belts in here and a metal detector for my planer. Um, this is all liquids. So over here we got like finishes and other assorted stuff here. Glue, WD-40, um, fuel. Yep. Down here I got some drill stuff, some air tools, uh, six ton jack, evapo rust, um, WD-40, and down there I got this is a headstone that I was using for sharpening things. And all that is just tools. Um, I recently picked up this Makita 18 volt hedge trimmer and I love it. I hate dealing with the cord. All right, moving to the next shelf, I have um, my, I don't know what to call them, modular storage system. Just like that's a modular storage system. But I got like PPE, bearings, doorknobs, wire staples, um, automation stuff. I don't know what that is. Small engine repair stuff, weed whacker stuff, an old air compressor, tire repair, um, dog leash stuff that I was working on. Are you guys in focus? Chainsaw sharpener, uh, zip ties, calculators, and other electronics. Uh, down there I got a few shop planes. This is a, a number seven, a number eight, a number six. And over my workbench, there is a, a Sigley number eight. And then below I got other stuff like shims and more PPE. Uh, saws, an old chainsaw. I moved all my other chainsaws to my other place already. And a gas-powered concrete cutter, a TS-400. The next shelf, I have more boxes of stuff. A lot of this is just electrical stuff. Um, Allen keys, belt sander, some saw stuff. Arduino stuff and a battery charger and a little compressor. Uh, I got a wiggy. My grandfather's... Craftsman, I don't even know what size this is. It's like a four, I think. And then I have a shaper down there, two lights that I picked up at the, uh, the local consignment store, and a drum sander and an ultrasonic cleaner. On the floor behind me, I have a whole bunch of um, scrap hinges that my old workplace has thrown out. I have a... Gerstner toolbox, an MBC um, radio alarm saw that's not set up. A, if you've seen me using this before, this is a Duro bandsaw. Um, I have it plugged into my lights there. Oh, that's one thing that I haven't really set up in here is any sort of power. I either run my power from an outlet way over there in the corner or from the lights. And all my lights are switched by right there is my switch. And I have to leave lights on all the time because there's no light switch upstairs for the lights down here and it creeps me out to come down to a dark basement. So I leave those lights on. But they're LEDs so they set power. Alright, going back to the bandsaw. I uh, upgraded the light there. You can see I needed something really small, so I got a, a normal socket and an adapter to go to uh, a tiny bulb. And it's sticking. Come on. Yeah, 
I might have to replace that. And I've never been happy with this bandsaw. Yeah, so the bearings are really loud behind the blade. You can hear that. And the table, the trunnions are really cheap. Like, if you've ever heard of survivorship bias, this is one that should not have survived because the trunnions are just, they're junk. You can't tighten it up. Moving on. Uh, a 6x48 by 9 inch Craftsman sander. This is an old blower. I forget where I got that. Caulking supplies. This is my Delta Milwaukee uh, 270. I, I don't remember exactly. And I built a, a wood um, trolley and then this lever lifts it up. It's in its lifted up position now. But I can press down there and lift the entire thing up because the board presses on these guys, which are hinged. And there's a uh, yeah. Oh, another cool thing here is oh yeah, Burge Helix. So I spent I spent. 75 bucks on the joiner and then like another 325 on on the head for that guy and i think i got the sander at the same time and that was like 45 bucks uh trash bin this is that barrel that i use for the water wheel bottom half of it here's my scroll saw which is a atlas i forgot it was an atlas i thought it was a delta 4002 um I love this thing. I built a stand for it. It's got a paddle stop switch. Here's another MBC. I troll Facebook. No, not Facebook. I troll Craigslist a lot for tool deals. And, you know, 60 bucks. I think that one on the floor was 45 bucks. Um, that one needs a new power cord and bearings. And I think this one's okay. And this one came with a stand. And there's my planer. This is my granddad's uh, toolbox that my dad gave me. And in it I have things like wrenches, screwdrivers, pry pokey bits. Um, this one's manuals. I got that crowbar in the way. Sharp shit one. Nice sharp shit. Drawer number two. And then hammers and more smacky bits. I forget what do I have down here. I have some lights and a motor and some old license plates. And there we are. Um, I'm just using a, a door on sawhorses for this workbench. And let's see, over here I have pile of unfinished projects they're all like hexagon shelves and then like a dice tower and one of my old jobs was making or testing load wheels for forklifts so I got a bunch of these used or bad test wheels and I might use those for tools someday like that's it's polyurethane on a steel core and it's rated for 3,500 pounds at three and a half miles an hour or something like that. And believe it or not, that's only half of my basement. I mean, you probably saw the other part, but the other half is kind of unused. I only wanted to properly light half of it. And the other half I have, well, the jet ski motor, jet ski parts. Um, I was doing all my spraying here like lacquer and I do it in front of the window with an exhaust and I've run through two water softeners while I'm here um, I need to throw this away here's some more jet ski parts and some biscuits I thought that was a bug it is um let's see Nothing real special over here. Compressor, that was my grandpa, grandpa's also. Um, this is a bench that I need to put together. It's half done. That was, I was using like Craig pocket holes 
And now I realize I should have been doing something more like Dowls or Festool Domino. But I don't have a Festool Domino yet. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Oh, I forgot the table saw. This I got, again, off of Craigslist. It was like 50 bucks. And I got um, a Freud 60 tooth blade in there. Yeah. You guys would recognize that. This is a uh, box of casters and apparently some magnetic tape. There's a bag full of drill bits. Ah, you guys, teaser. Yeah, second part of the water wheel installation video. I've gotten another shaft bearings and a, another sprocket. And I'm still waiting on another sprocket for that. Here's my, uh, my tool bag that I use around the house. I'm missing some stuff. <laughs> I'm not the most diligent about refilling or replacing the tools where I got them from. And like, here's where my Makita, you know, that repair drill that I did goes. It doesn't have a quick chuck on it. You know, it has one that requires a key. But I use a, uh, yeah, one of those pokey bits to quickly switch out my bits. So this works great for anything around the house, like hanging picture frames or... I don't know what else, you know, whatever. Replacing uh, battery doors on the kids' toys. Not that we have kids, but we have nephews and whatever. Yeah. Um, let's get you to focus back on me. Okay. Uh, so if you like that, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Joe Malovich. Sorry, no at Joe underscore Malovich. Yes. Um, I also have a website that doesn't have much on it, joemalovich.com. Uh, yeah, hope to see you around.